guys, so I want to talk to you today about the post-holiday blues, winter blues, anything like that. I'm not talking about full-on depression or seasonal affective disorder, although those can definitely coexist at the same time as this phenomenon and definitely make it a lot worse if you do suffer from one or both of those, but I'm just talking about this phenomena itself and reasons that it tends to happen um, and ways you can mitigate it because Sure, there's some lucky people out there who don't seem to really go through this year after year or at all, and I envy them. But for the rest of us, you know, this tends to be a thing, and you're not alone. It's really, really common, so I want to go into some reasons that it happens and some reasons to help you combat it. So the first and biggest reason that people tend to end up with post-holiday blues um, and sadness, I call the brick wall effect. Because starting from, like, October, maybe even September, depending how you go about your things. For me, it's September. But um, for several months there, you are just going, 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 busy all the time, planning all the things, shopping, cooking, decorating, you name it, holidays left and right, get-togethers. There's all this stuff going on. And then January rolls around, and you can practically hear the car go, scratch, and just come to a halt. And then there's suddenly nothing. It's like you hit that brick wall. Because now, it, it's like the laws of inertia. You, an object in motion stays in motion unless something hits it. And January is that brick wall that you just hit. And then you come crashing down from all of that busyness. And now you feel like, well, now what do I do with myself? And then just the sadness sets in. And it sucks. Um... But again, we're going to talk about ways to get over that. But that is, in my opinion, the biggest and the most common reason that it happens. But there's some others. So let's go into those two. So in my opinion, probably the second most common reason and probably second biggest reason is family get-togethers as well-intentioned as they are um, and as wonderful as they are. I'm not saying don't do them. Absolutely still do them. <laughs> but... They have a tendency to have kind of a boomerang effect, uh, because if it goes well, then all this family that you don't normally get to see that you got to spend time with at the holidays, it just reminds you that much more how much you miss them the rest of the time. And if it doesn't go well, on the other side of the scale here, um, you end up with family conflicts and fights, you end up feeling disappointed by people, um, uh, just end up upset with various things that happen depending on your family dynamic situation. Obviously not necessarily with everybody, although for some people it is everybody. Um, but I mean, it's one of those things. It's a double-edged sword where it can go in either direction here, whether it went good or bad, and still lead to the same outcome. Which sucks, but it is what it is. Another big one. And for me especially, this one hits really hard because of just how many times over it hits for me. The holidays remind us of people who are no longer with us, be it through death, be it through separation, be it through you parted ways for one reason or another, be it a friend, be it a lover, be it whoever. Um, it can be, did I say divorce? If I didn't, it can be by divorce. Um, there's all sorts of reasons why people are no longer in our lives that used to be, and the holidays have a way of making us think about them and things that remind us of them and miss them. Even if it is somebody who's technically still on this earth, and there's reason one way or another of why they're no longer in our life, it doesn't stop you from missing them. That's human nature, and it happens. But the most common one is obviously those of us, or I mean those people who are no longer in our life because they passed away, um, yeah, I find that the holidays are like the biggest time that makes us miss them more than anything. This one's kind of a given as being one of the reasons, but I mean, the weather. Being all dark and gloomy, or depending where you are in the country, or I suppose in the world, this isn't just for America, um, snowy and cold, and just... It's really, really depressing when you think about it, and especially if you have, like, seasonal affective disorder, that messes with a person big time. And even if you don't have that, just 
are a normal, neurotypical individual, it, it can still be a depressing thing that affects your moods. So, after all the holiday lights and such are down and just the gloominess of the weather sets in, yeah, it's not uncommon that all of a sudden, now you feel sad and you, you can't quite put your finger on why. And for some people, you know, something as small as that can cause that. So this one kind of goes along with the first one, but fatigue. Uh, from going about 10 zillion miles an hour for months on end, funny thing, you tend to wear yourself down. I mean, some people I suppose don't, but most people, yeah, you come out of December and you just feel drained and you need a rest. And at the same time, fatigue, it can make you feel depressed too. Um, be it literal depression or just sadness, but either way, it can affect your moods because it makes you feel lousy physically, and when you feel lousy physically, that often carries over into emotionally as well. So, then of course, there's overindulgence in food and in drinking, uh, be it just feeling a little disappointed with yourself for being that far off track with your diet goals, or if you put on a bunch of weight from eating all the holiday sweets and nice meals and everything, or just you drank a bunch and you packed on some pounds, or you fell off the wagon and, yeah, now you feel crappy with yourself because you fell off the wagon, uh, that, you know, it, it happens, it happens. It's not to say that come January you can't pick yourself back up and fix it, just in the moment, yeah, it kind of kicks your butt emotionally and makes you feel depressed. If you took time off of work, uh, depending on the type of work that you do, you may come back and find this huge backlog of work that now you have to tackle because you took that time off and now on top of the work you have currently, you also have this big old pile of work over here that still has to be done too. Yeah. Struggle is real. If you're self-employed and in a creative field, odds are, especially if you sell things, like moi, uh, you may find that the holidays get uber stressful and tiring because you have to keep up with demand of said orders over the holidays. That can feel like the same thing too, and possibly also keep carrying over into January as well. So either of these scenarios, they definitely apply and they are very real. And finally, I'm not saying these are the only reasons, but I mean, the last one I could think of offhand when I was brainstorming these is, you know, sometimes the holidays just didn't play out the way that we wanted them to this year, and you end up feeling disappointed for one reason or another, or a bunch of reasons, it just, you know, was it didn't live up to your expectations. Sometimes that disappointment can also lead to feelings of just sadness, too, for it not living up to it, and... We as humans tend to take that personally and internalize it even though it's not necessarily our fault. Even more so if it is somehow our fault, you know, it just, it's human nature to do that. So that's another reason. So we talked about a bunch of causes for the post-holiday blues, winter blues, whatever you want to call them. Let's talk about solutions now. So one big one. And hearkening back to the first one on the list of reasons, um, because of that brick wall effect, give yourself something else to be excited about and to look forward to. It can be big, it can be small, it can be anything in between. It can be a bunch of things. It can be just one thing if it's a bigger thing. I mean, just anything. Give yourself some things to look forward to. It could be something as big as a, a vacation. It could be something as small as looking for upcoming album or movie releases that get you excited. It could be hanging out with friends. It could be picking up a new hobby. It could be taking a class. The sky's the limit. Like, there's so many things you could do to get yourself excited. Just, you know, it depends on you personally. What gets you excited? What do you look forward to that gets you excited? Figure out what you can do that you can implement as soon as possible after the holidays. Obviously, if they're smaller things, you can probably do more of them quicker than if you have to, like, save up for, like, a big vacation. But, I mean, if you have deep pockets, maybe not. But for the rest of us, um, you know, do what you can, but definitely get things that you are excited about coming up. And don't let it be just one thing to where now you're gonna just have a new brick wall to hit. Uh, try to have a few things spread out 
all over the place so that you keep having things to be excited for. This one's pretty self-explanatory, but if you are feeling hugely exhausted, tons of fatigue, give yourself a chance to rest. I mean, it, it's one of those things that we all know we should do and yet often overlook, but I mean, seriously, if you feel exhausted, that is the obvious solution towards making that feel better. And each thing that you checked on this list for reasons of why you have the post-holiday blues, one by one, figure out what you can do to improve them. And that one, even though it sounds so self-explanatory, you'd be surprised how many people, it just, it doesn't even dawn on them that that's a thing that's playing into them feeling lousy, but as soon as they start to rest, they do notice an improvement in their moods. It sounds so stupid, but I swear to you, it's real. <laughs> If you have the luxury of being able to do this one, um, if you have a big backlog of work to catch up on when you go back to work, see if there's a way that you can ease back into it. Be it by, if like the first day or two back, you can like do a couple half days before fully immersing yourself again, or see if you can start on like a Thursday or so, or a Friday, so that you have a weekend right there coming up instead of an entire huge long work week to have to digest all at once coming straight back from the holidays. Um, it can offset it a little bit and try to ease your way into catching up on the backlog of work that you need to do as well as keeping up on the current stuff. I mean, it really depends on what type of work that you do, but there's always ways of integrating this to where you can ease yourself back in one way or another. So here comes another one of the ones that sounds really common logic, common sense, and yet so easy to overlook. Getting back into your usual schedule. So when the holidays come along for months on end, they really do upend your whole entire life for a few months, and your schedules kind of go out the window because you're running around doing a million things, and when you think that, you compare how you live day-to-day -day life during the holiday season compared to the rest of the year, it's chaos. It is absolute madness. I mean, it's a fun madness, but it is madness nonetheless. Um, so the sooner that you can start to get yourself back into your normal groove of your regular everyday life, of getting up at the, right at the same time that you normally would, going to bed at the same time you normally would, getting your eating schedule back on track, your exercise schedule back on track, work schedule, hobbies, I mean, whatever it is that you do that makes your schedule, your schedule, get it back on track. Because we, even if you want to deny it, um, humans are creatures of habit. So, I mean, at the base root of things, we really are. So, the sooner you can get back into your normal habits and your normal schedules, the sooner you're going to start feeling more reacclimated into normal everyday life again. So, there's that. So going right along with that one, get your eating and drinking habits back to normal. So, okay, you had a few months in there where you could go kind of apeshit crazy with eating all the holiday foods, eat whatever the hell you want, who cares, uh, that's for January, don't worry about taking off that weight, and uh, have all the holiday drinks, and yeah, again, I'll, I'll worry about getting that back under control again come January. Yeah, now it's January, now it's time to get that back on track, so, um, just saying, that's the time. You don't have to go hardcore diet junkie or anything if that's not your norm, I'm just talking about get back to your normal eating habits, your normal drinking habits, which, if you usually have, like, a glass of wine in the evenings, get back to only having that. Don't be imbibing in a whole crap ton more. Um, if you normally don't drink at all, then get back to not drinking at all. I mean, it just, it sounds so stupid and commonplace, but it's the, all the little things like this added up into the big picture that really do lead you to start feeling more normal again. One more thing with the eating thing that I forgot to mention before I clicked the shutter button before. Exercising. I mean, yeah, you have to get your exercise schedule back on track, and get your weight back down, but also don't beat yourself up over the weight that you put on over the holidays. Even if it's a sizable amount, you can take it back off. Reassure yourself that you will do what you need to do to take it back off and do those things. 
and move on with your life. There is no sense in making yourself feel terrible about it. There's none. That will actually probably lead you to stress eat and put on more weight and then feel worse about yourself and it's a never-ending cycle. No, no. Throw that shame out the window. Just pick yourself back up and start working on just getting back to normal again. That's all you have to do. And I know that sounds very just, oh, la di da it's easy for you to say that. No, I'm talking about just, yes, it's a process. Yes, it takes time. But this is the time to start that process. So this one probably, to most people, doesn't sound that big and important, but it really is when contributing to your moods. Getting enough sunlight, which I realize, depending on your climate, is easier said than done. But I mean, there's little ways that regardless of what the weather is, that you can get some of your vitamin D back into your system. Like, if you sit near a window during the daytime to get some of the sun rays, even if it's cloudy out, there is still some sun rays that are getting through those clouds that reach your body that help you absorb that vitamin D. All of that does add up. But if you live somewhere that doesn't get a lot of sun and you are more prone to things like seasonal affective disorder, you should probably really consider two things. One, taking a vitamin D supplement. And I mean, most people, honestly, in this day and age kind of need one. And yes, that's not just conjecture. My doctor actually told me that. And two, think about investing in one of those UV, like, sunlight lamps. Uh, again, your doctor can recommend a good one that's safe and everything and direct you in how to use it, but like 10 minutes in front of one of those a day. It's not going to get you tan, it's not going to give you skin cancer, it's just going to help mimic the sun and the effects that it has on your mood and on your circadian rhythms and everything. So, just saying, it sounds silly and yes, they're kind of expensive, but for the payoff, they are so, so worth it. So getting your sleep cycles back on track is another big one. I mean, it goes along with the getting enough rest thing, but I mean, you can rest without sleeping. But I mean, the sleep schedule thing too, we tend to sleep a lot less during the holidays than we do the rest of the time. So this is the time to get your normal sleep schedule back on track so you can get back to feeling rested and feel normal again. So there's also that. So those of you who've been around my channel for a while, are probably going to call me out for being a huge, huge hypocrite on this one, but I mean, it's why I can say it with such authority, I think, on how big of a difference it makes, but when it comes to your New Year's resolutions, if you have already dropped them, be kind to yourself about it. Have grace for yourself about that, because just because you already messed up, like, for instance, if you said you're going to exercise X times a week and you've just not done it, th that doesn't mean, oh well, guess I'll try again next year. Yes, I'm speaking from personal experience. No, that means pick yourself up, dust yourself off, get back on that horse, and try again. And you can keep trying again all damn year. And this goes for any New Year's resolution. Just saying. Just because you fail at it right off the bat does not mean you stop trying. Keep trying to do the thing. And at the same time, don't beat yourself up for not necessarily doing it yet. Again, try. That doesn't give you a free pass to just not try. It just means when you do mess up, don't beat yourself up over it. Just try again. The next day's a new day. Try again. Um, this one, I mean, it, it probably sounds cheesy, but I mean, think about the specific things it is about the holidays that make you miss them when they're gone. I mean, is it reconnecting with family and friends that you don't normally see through a lot of the rest of the year? If it's that one, make a point of reaching out to them and calling them more often, or talking to them online, Skyping, hanging out with them in person. Just make a point of reintegrating that thing that you enjoyed so much about the holidays. Make it happen year-round. There's no reason why you can't. Um, is it the twinkly lights? You can definitely, without looking stupid, you can most definitely integrate this into your home in various ways. Sure, you can use twinkle lights inside your house to add a little bit of flair that way that can both feel just pretty without necessarily feeling like, Oh, somebody just didn't take down their Christmas lights. No, you can actually make it work in your decor. Um, 
You can also add just soft lighting through things like candles. There's all sorts of things you can do like that, that give that sort of warm glow that it just, it's a cozy feeling and you can definitely integrate that all year. Um, is it the scents? There's lots of ways that you can integrate that one. They don't have to necessarily be Christmassy ones. You can keep using them for a bit, but I mean, you might want to just find cozy ones that are similar, but not necessarily exactly the same. So, I mean, things like candles, again, scented ones. You can do wax warmers. You can do oil burners. You can do air fresheners. You can do, um potpourri. You can do all sorts of different things to bring those holiday scents into your house year-round. Um, although, again, like I said, I wouldn't use necessarily the Christmas ones all year. <laughs> um, I would maybe do some wintry ones that are more general wintry but still cozy after the holidays are over and slowly start to integrate them towards spring, like within the next month or so after that. But I mean, that's just my opinion. You can do what you want. I mean, if you want to do like cinnamon year round, be my guest. Um, but just saying, that's another thing you can do that still brings about that cozy, warm feeling even after the holidays have gone. Um, is it the warmth of the holidays? I mean, if you have a fireplace, you don't have to only burn it at the holidays. Um, or one of the like false ones that's not really fire, but I mean, uh, what are they called? Like the little portable fireplaces that they throw the heat, but it's not like a fire fire in it. It just looks like it. Um, you can definitely keep using those. Uh, you can keep enjoying the cozy clothing, the cozy blankets, um, just all sorts of different things. You can definitely integrate all of that. Um, the movies, the music, I mean, yeah, you could keep watching them even after the holidays are done, but I would say you can still find, like, heartwarming films and music that gives you that same sort of sentimental feeling without it necessarily being holiday music. Uh, just figure out what specifically it is, what feelings do these movies, do these songs bring about for you, and then think about what other types of movies, or even ones that you know of specifically, do you think would also bring about those same feelings? And then go about listening to and watching them. Um, so I think this general line of thinking, you can keep going down the list for things that you miss about the holidays after they're gone, and then ways you can integrate them throughout the year. Uh, it, it can go on and on. These are just some suggestions that I thought of, but I mean, these are just a few. They are not a full list by any means. And if you have more suggestions, feel free to leave them down below, because I both for myself love to hear them, and I bet other people here that are watching this video would also like to hear your ideas. So during the holidays, I mean, we get all caught up in the gift giving and doing kind things for others, like bringing meals to the elderly, things like that. Um, again, you don't have to wait till the holidays to do things for others. You can volunteer, you can give to charity, you can do all sorts of things. You can even do the little things, again, like bringing meals to the elderly. Um, or checking in on an elderly neighbor. I know I keep using that example, but speaking from personal experience, but again, just little things you can do to pay it forward and just give to others. Uh, that's a big one, I find, that does bring about some of those same warm, fuzzy feelings that the holidays do. And I think that, you know, if you try them, you'd find that it's really surprisingly effective. This one, some of you guys are probably going to roll your eyes at me when I say it, and to those people I say, don't knock it till you try it, because yeah, when I first heard this term years ago, I probably may have definitely rolled my eyes a little too, until I tried it, and it does make a difference, and that is adopting an attitude of gratitude, and there's many ways you can do that, but I mean, one easy one is, like, coming up with, like, daily gratitude lists. Like, come up with, if you have a hard time, even just one thing every day that you're grateful for. And don't repeat anything. You have to come up with a new one every day. If you feel you can do more than that, do three a day, do five a day, do ten a day. Whatever you think you can come up with that you are grateful for in your life, write them down. Like, start a notebook just for that. 
and just you'll find that the more that you find yourself searching for things that you're grateful for, it retrains your brain in a way because just by nature, most people, we kind of tend to look for things to be negative about, to complain about, to bitch about, and it just, it's kind of cathartic in a way, but on the other hand, it also brings about a negative attitude. And then when you finally start retraining your brain into looking for things to be grateful about, the opposite tends to become true, and you find that your moods begin to lift and your outlook on life does begin to shift. I'm not going to say that it's necessarily a huge, massive, life-changing thing all on its own, but you know what? It does make a difference. It does help some. So I'm going to throw that out there to you guys. So that does help and you might want to start doing that. You don't have to, but it is a suggestion. And then finally, just the knowledge that you're not alone in this. This is a thing that most of us, whether we want to admit to it or not, we do tend to feel this after the holidays are all over and done with, and these feelings are temporary. They are not how you're going to feel forever, which again sounds silly, but when you're in the midst of feeling sad, it is very easy to feel overwhelmed and like, who knows when this is gonna, it just feels very overwhelming and very big. But when you can remind yourself that it's temporary, these feelings will pass, it makes it a lot easier to digest. And similarly, if they don't, and it keeps going for like a month, or if it gets worse or starts getting into territory of being like true full-on depression, seek help. Just do yourself a favor. You don't have to suffer. You do not have to suffer, and you shouldn't. Seek help. So that is about all I can suggest to you guys. Good luck. I hope that these tips help you guys some, as they have helped me. Um, I'm trying to pay it forward to you guys by sharing these tips with you all. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you're not already and you'd like to please click subscribe, hit that notification bell icon so you never miss an upload, leave comments down below. Is there anything that I missed, any tips that you would like to contribute that help you, that you'd like to help others by sharing? Please leave them all down below as well as anything else you feel like leaving me. Make sure you're following my social media accounts, they're all listed down below, my Facebook fan page, my Instagram, my Twitter, my Etsy, all of them, they're all down there. And if you like what I do here on this channel and you'd like to help support it, the donation link, as always, is down in the description. So anyway guys, till next time, bye bye